Why do you lie about obvious things? It just makes you look bad. Over the last couple of days, there has been a story in the international media about a Russian nuclear submarine breaking down during transit through the Danish Straits. And I thought it would be interesting to take a look at this story. What apparently happened was that the submarine, the uh, Oscar II class uh, nuclear attack submarine, Ariel from the uh, Russian Northern Fleet, had been to St. Petersburg to participate in the uh, Navy Day Parade. And during transit through the Danish waters, apparently they got some kind of propulsion problem and uh, they drifted around for an hour, an hour and a half, something like that. This was reported by, for example, the Barents Observer, which I have here, and... Uh, uh, they report that uh, the Danish Navy uh, had told about this uh, uh, submarine and losing propulsion, and now it was outside Norway, this uh, submarine. And uh, we got some nice pictures here. We also have uh, the uh, uh, picture here of the submarine, and uh, down here, the accompanying uh, 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 vessel, uh, Alte, was apparently preparing to tow uh, the, the submarine when, um, when ha this happened, but the submarine, they fixed the problems and they got underway themselves. This uh, story was also picked up by uh, the drive. And this picture was taken from the Danish patrol boat Diana, which accompanied the, uh, the Russian submarine uh, on uh, during this transit. So there are a couple of interesting uh, things to this. Uh, first off, it's of course interesting that a Russian nuclear submarine uh, breaks down and that it happens in a place where it's so obvious. This raises a lot of questions about uh, the maintenance state of uh, Russian submarines and uh, is the safety of this. It's After all, it's a nuclear power plant inside this submarine, so is it actually safe and, and so on and so on. But it also raises questions about how did this story uh, get to the public. What happened was that uh, the crew on this patrol ship, Diana, they published the story on a Facebook page uh, they are a part of the 3rd Squadron in Denmark, and the 3rd Squadron has their own Facebook page where ships can sort of um, uh, tell interesting stories about life at sea and what's going on and what they experienced, and it's sort of a kind of feel-good uh, kind of uh, page, and uh, it's, it's supposed to all be very informal. They had spent more or less their entire patrol uh, escorting Russian warships out of the Baltic Sea because there had been this naval day parade and uh, lots of ships were, were returning home. And they described the situation and uh, what they wrote is that uh, on one of these escorts, this submarine Ario uh, got some kind of uh, propulsion problem and that it was dramatic and exciting. And this apparently happened close to the island of Sire, and the Russian submarine drifted at a speed of 1.5 knots towards the island. The Danish ship offered their assistance, uh, which was uh, refused by the Russians, and uh, the Russian uh, ship Altai prepared to tow the vessel. And what we see in, uh, in this picture is that the crew of Ariol are preparing to be towed. But before they actually got the towing underway, the submarine, they got the problems fixed. It continued to sail. This is not some kind of grand stratcom uh, idea from the Danish Navy uh, to tell the story and to somehow embarrass the Russian Navy. On the contrary, uh, this is a feel-good kind of story, uh, the crew just uh, telling about their, their experiences, and then they go on from explaining about the story to actually making some kind of joke that this looks like kind of a scene from the Hunt for Red October. They also mention, for example, that uh, uh, they had been uh, unhappy with the behavior of Danish pleasure craft in the area, that um, during the transit of all these Russian warships were, would come too close, so they actually started to uh, uh, to interfere and to keep the Danish pleasure craft away because they felt it was unsafe and it was uh, not the right way to, to treat the Russian warships. And they also show pictures of a lot of other things that are not at all related to this incident with Ariel uh, breaking down. If we take a look at the map, what happened was that uh, these ships were coming out of the Baltic Sea, um, and uh, which is in here, proceeding towards Skagerrak up here, and then further north around Norway. And uh, they underway, they 
pass typically through the Great Belt, which is here. And the place that uh, the incident happened was uh, right in the northern part of Great Belt. We have here the, let me zoom one more time. We have here the island of Sire, which apparently the, the submarine drifted towards, and it was just north of the traffic separation scheme at Hadar, which is located right here. So it's, it's kind of crowded place, uh, lots of traffic typically. And it's normal that whenever there is a passage here, uh, then the Danish ships will um, will escort the Russian ships just sort of to keep an eye on what's going on, and make sure everything is safe, etc. They use the terms dramatic and exciting about this. They did not say that anything was dangerous in the situation. I think it's, it's important to distinguish there because even though they use the word dramatic, that basically just means there was some kind of drama. To be honest, it can be pretty boring to conduct these escorts of Russian warships. So when something happens like this, the Russian warship has a problem, and that is exciting. That is drama, at least more drama than what you usually have on one of those escorts, right? So that does not mean that it's dangerous at all. It just means something was exciting. Of course, we don't know if anything was actually dangerous. That's the whole thing all the time. When you have these nuclear submarines, there's always this uh, kind of idea, how safe is it actually? Is it actually safe when they're passed through the Danish waters? Is there some kind of danger here? Uh, we don't know that, but nothing indicates in this situation that there was anything dangerous going on. So interestingly, but probably not surprisingly, uh, the Russian news agency TASS brought a very, very quick note about the incident. Uh, and they basically just say that a source from the Navy had told them that the uh, reports in the Danish media about a Russian submarine losing propulsion during transit is inaccurate and that everything went as planned. And this leads me to the question of why would you lie about stuff like that? And I recognize that there is an internal Russian audience for this kind of information as well. But at the same time, I also think that credibility in the West means something. Clearly, this did take place. When you so blatantly lie about it, you reinforce the impression in the West that the uh, Russian Ministry of Defense is full of BS and we can't take anything coming from Russian sources as the truth. And this was, for example, what we saw in the early summer uh, when we had the HMS Defender incident uh, off Crimea, and we had this discussion between the Russian Ministry of Defense and the British Ministry of Defense, did the Russians actually fire warning shots? And everybody in the West just assumed that the Russians were lying about this because they lie all the time, right? So, and, and I think when you take situations like this one that happened in the Danish Straits and you lie about it, you reinforce that image that you are not trustworthy. So even though there might be an internal Russian audience for this kind of information, you also undermine your ability to control a narrative in the future and to communicate effectively with the West. They could have easily just said, sure, we had something, uh, it was not dangerous at any time, everything was under control, and the towing thing, it was just a safety precaution because we're all about safety in the Russian Navy, et cetera, et cetera. So you could have handled this differently and told a different story that would increase your credibility and instead now you just damaged your credibility and you did not in fact offer any information that would help drive the narrative in the West. So now this story has turned into just another example that will be pulled out of the closet whenever somebody wants to put a question mark on the capabilities of the Russian Navy. And in this regard, it might also be interesting to note that it's not even a year ago that we had a collision in Danish waters as well involving a Russian warship that collided with a merchant ship in Falk because apparently they, they weren't prepared to handle that situation. That was all for now. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a thumbs up, maybe even subscribe to the channel. That will let me know that I should do more videos like this. Bye.